In this lesson, we will be discussing the valuation of stocks. If you've ever seen a financial investment show, looked at a stock trading app, or heard a friend talking about stock prices, then you might think it's easy to figure out the value of a stock. Truth is, there's a lot of calculations and considerations that go into figuring out the price of stocks. Why is it so difficult to figure out the price of a stock? There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to stocks. They rise and fall, sometimes without warning, and picking the right one to invest in can be a guessing game. Firstly, when it comes to stocks, not even the promised cash flows are known. So you really don't know what you'll be earning from your investment, if anything. Also, because stocks never mature, the life of their investment is basically forever. If you invested in a stock, then there's no time frame or end date when you'll recoup all the money you invested in it. There's a good chance that you may never get your investment money back. Additionally, it's difficult to figure out the rate of return for a stock. Without a clear rate of return, the investor will have a hard time figuring out their loss or gain from the stock. However, there are some ways we can get around these problems. If our main issues is that there are no certainties about stocks, then to figure out something definite about them, like their present value, we need to add some parameters. For our purposes, let's assume we know the growth rate of our stocks. The three growth rates we will consider are zero growth, constant growth, and non-constant growth. In our first case, a stock dividend has a zero growth rate. If the stock does not grow, then the dividend will always be the same. This situation can be considered an ordinary perpetuity because of an example of a regular payment that will go on forever. How would we find the value of a stock in a zero growth case? Let's say that you invest in a company that will pay $100 for each share dividend per year. Although the payments will continue indefinitely, your required rate of return is 25%. To find the value of the stock, you would divide the amount of cash paid out by the dividend $100, by the rate of return, 25%. In this example, the value of the stock would be $400 per share. In our second case, a stock dividend grows at a steady rate. A cash flow that will continue paying and growing at a steady rate forever is called a growing perpetuity. This scenario asks us to find the single growth rate of a dividend instead of trying to figure out the present value of an indefinite number of future dividends. How would we find the value of a stock in a constant growth case? To find the value of these kinds of stocks, you would need to use the dividend growth model. This model takes the value of the next period dividend and divides it by the discount rate minus the dividend growth rate to find the value of the stock. This model is only used if the growth rate is less than the discount rate. If the constant growth rate exceeds or equals the discount rate, then the stock price would be incalculably large. We wouldn't need to use the dividend growth model in this case because any answer we got would be nonsensical and ridiculous. In our third and final case, a stock dividend grows at a non-constant rate for a small amount of time. After that period of non-constant growth ends, the stock will grow at a constant growth rate. This makes it a lot easier for us to calculate the value of the stock today. How would you find the value of a dividend growing at a non-constant rate? Because we know the dividend will grow at a constant rate in the future, we first calculate the present value of the dividend once it starts to grow at a constant rate. We then discount the price of the dividend by the amount of years it experienced non-constant growth and by the rate of return. As we've learned, the process of figuring out the value of stocks is entirely dependent on future dividends and growth. Because there is so much uncertainty in stocks, we have to set up parameters or cases to forecast what a stock might be worth in the future. In spite of this, stocks can be a valuable perpetual investment that might be worth the risk. Thank you.